So, good morning, guys. So, it's been a while. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, Happy New Year 2024. Um, it's been a while since I posted uh, something here, but um, you know how it is. I get into things and I never seem to pull out the camera. But I thought I'd uh, just do this real quick here. This is, uh, this is a high probability of failure project. <laughs> And many of my projects are that way, but I'm going to give it a shot anyway. So um, I I really do uh, enjoy um, rebuilding uh, old machinery, and I uh, often when I do that, I need to rescrape ways, rescrape gibs, and um, I have uh, these manual. Let's see here, these manual scrapers. Uh, these are these are brand new. I just bought them uh, from Germany. Um, let's see, they're Rensteg, Rensteg, right there, uh, manual scrapers. This is the uh, big wide one, the inch and a quarter one, and <coughs> this one right here, um, same thing, it's just narrower, so that one is uh, three quarters of an inch. Um, so these are brand new, I just got those. Uh, the one I've been using is one that I've made, I'll show you that real quickly. It's uh, just really not that great but anyway at first it was a file that um, I had uh, ground the end on and uh, scraped with come on focus there we go and then after that I got the idea of adding a uh, carbide bit to it and then um, uh, grinding that carbide bit to uh, about I think it's five or seven degrees um, you know, my scraping is with this ridiculous tool, and it's not working out really good because the radius is really quite tight, so, uh, you know, for scraping you need a much uh, larger radius uh, in order to do an effective job, so this was very painful. But anyway, back to, uh, that's just a side note, back to what I'm doing here, I guess you can uh, kind of uh, see, I bought a cheap, use, well, wasn't that cheap, oh, it was cheap, I guess, uh, I used a Sawzall. <coughs> And uh, I've seen guys on YouTube um, take these um, reciprocating saws and make uh, a power uh, scraper, like a Biax. Because those Biaxes, they're like uh, between four and $5,000 new, so that's just not going to happen. And um, I thought, okay, well, why don't I modify this? Well, I got a Milwaukee instead of, you know, the real cheap, cheap ones. And I think that was a mistake because the quality of the stuff in here is super high hardened parts everywhere and it's a complete different mechanism like uh, it's just really fancy stuff so there's this uh, cam system right here um, with a counterweight and the counterweight has got a pin that's offset that runs the um, uh, the link bar and the link bar even has a super nice bearing in there I don't know if you see that um, surprising how good the quality is of uh, what they put in there, but I guess you get what you pay for. And um, where's the other part? Oh yeah, then it, uh, oops, let's see here. Then it runs, you know, this guy that you're familiar with right here back and forth. Uh, that attaches, um, that attaches to the end right there, that moves back and forth. So uh, I'm going to rebuild this, uh, or actually no, I'm going to make uh, something new to replace this. Got my hands cleaned up there, didn't mean to uh, get them greased up. Uh, anyway, so that means, um, so here's the issue. Uh, the distance between the center of rotation right here and the cam lobe on this machine is uh, just over 10 millimeters. So that gives you a 20 millimeter stroke, uh, just under an inch, which is too much for uh, scraping. Um, what, uh, what I understand uh, a 10 millimeter stroke is what's, uh, what's, what's required for fine to medium scraping. For really rough scraping, yeah, you could use this 20 millimeter, but I don't do anything that crazy. So there isn't any space in here to, uh, you know, drill another hole and bring it in because it will center over this existing shaft. So, you know, this is not going to work. And this is why some of the cheaper units that have, uh, I think it's called a scotch thing, uh, is better because it's very easy to modify and uh, anyway so what I'm doing instead um, let me just bring you over to the uh, notes is I'm going to turn a new uh, a new wheel 
Um, and I'm going to make a cam uh, right here. And this cam basically, it's going to have the center shaft uh, in line with the center of rotation. But it's going to have a, a, an offset cam uh, that I'm going to attach that link bar to. And uh, that offset cam I've uh, calculated so that uh, it's going to be a 5mm offset, which will give me a 10mm stroke. And uh, this part right here is going to get cut off because uh, it's just not going to work. Um, but, uh, and then it needs a new bushing, so that's already done. Um, and the next part I'm going to do right now is, uh, is this cam feature right here. So what I did <coughs> back on the lathe is um, I have a uh, hardened pin. These are just your standard pins that uh, you would buy at McMaster Car Hardened. And I threw it in the heat treat oven and uh, brought it up to 1550 degrees Fahrenheit to anneal it. And uh, it is, uh, I'm just chucking it up in the fore jaw uh, because I'm putting in the fore jaw in order to uh, turn that uh, cam feature. So I'm going to have to offset the, well I've never done this before so I, <laughs> I hope this is how you do it. I'm going to offset uh, uh, the jaws. Uh, in one plane, uh, five millimeters, and uh, hopefully that will give me uh, my ten millimeter, um, you know, swing. So that's the idea behind that. Uh, that's why I'm up to uh, this morning, and um, I'll uh, see. I'll bring you along as uh, as I go.